So for those of us who do tutorials that have nodes in them, we all get the, the question probably more than once a week. And the question is, and I'm going to drop this on you guys, and I'm going to put you on the spot, and I'm going to see if you guys can answer the question. Hmm. And you can answer the. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to answer the question. So, how do you learn nodes? You need to have a math degree. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm almost there, man. <laughs> Gotta go to college. Yeah. So, how would you right. answer that question, gentlemen? You play around with them. That's it. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and watch CG Geeks crazy tutorials. A lot, noted. a lot of experimentation. But I tell you what, I learned a lot from breaking down other people's work from November. Do you remember that? Yes. One of yep. my, I think one of my best videos in terms of like audience reaction was uh, showing off the best November results and recreating demonstrations of things people have made because that stuff just blew people's minds. And you can just break it all down and look at all the nodes. That is a really good way to see how everything works. Yeah, take Simon Tom's stuff and look mm. at it. Like especially his his tardi tardigrade. Yeah, it was just like animated vector displacement that actually came out as a tardigrade, as little microscopic thing. Yeah, that was crazy. Oh, God, there's it was, a, it was awesome. It was there's sick. an artist that in the name is Drips. I forget the name. One hundred Drips. One hundred Drips. If you go on his mm. Twitter, he he has my favorite Twitter account. In terms of blender content yeah because he'll he makes these incredible and it's not even like classic like material creation he makes these pieces that are like standalone they don't you don't apply it to a model you don't apply it. it's like the in, in that sense where you would commonly like make a material that applies to something that looks like something mm -hmm. he's very artistic with completely node-based creation um and it's super inspiring to just try to like dig in and learn it but in terms of the question that like how I learned nodes, there's a channel called Syncretic 3D, and for a while he was posting like very frequently uh, shading tutorials. And what I did was I just I remember I learned almost everything I knew, not almost everything, quite a bit of what I know. I learned it in like a four hour, five hour tutorial watching session, binging his channel and copying every single thing he does. And what, what you learn is when, when you do that is you learn there's a patterns to things. There's patterns to everything. And so you learn there's a pattern to making particular like a setup that allows you to do a thing like leather or scratches or whatever. And, and, and once you pick up on those patterns, it's like the sort of the thing in your brain flips. And then you could start like really branching out and learning stuff. And there's still so much that I don't know. But I would recommend his channel. What I would do is I would say go into YouTube and look up tutorials that have like good node-based like creation. Make a YouTube playlist and then binge that and just work really hard. And as you learn the patterns, as you learn what things do, you start to figure it out. Because if you just watch like two tutorials a day trying to learn something, it'll be it'll be a yeah. much slower process. Because yeah. nodes is something that's even still daunting to me, and I don't know that much. I've just learned my pattern. And if you watch a lot of my tutorials, I have my own pattern mm -hmm. that yields the, the results that fit with my work. So that's that's what I would that that would be my my answer. And then it just starts. I want to give some advice. Hmm. Um here's the thing. I feel like you you could either learn it just from like a oh this when you combine it with this creates this kind of effect. What what I've always recommended is literally look up what the node actually does. I always use this example. Learn what Voronoi noise does, because once you understand it, it's the beginning. To it's what it is is it scatters points on your mesh, essentially, and then it does some like uh, see sees w which areas are closer to which point. But once you have this, you can create so many effects. Anytime you need to scatter points, you know Voronoi texture. Um, it the math is very. It's just addition, subtract. It's arithmetic. Just learn the definitions of the nodes. Nobody wants to do it, but it's in the documentation. It, it explains most of it. True. Yeah, and I, it I did also, a video. I did a video on this uh, this little desert sea, and this is when I was just introducing myself to nodes, really. And I start with the basic outline, like deserts have like strands of lines, so you figure out how to get those strands of lines going, and then get the little bumpy effect from the sand, and then the different color variations. I like. I break it down into steps and accomplish the first step first and then build on top of that. 
because when I see someone do complex nodes, I'm like, how in the world did you possibly understand that? But really, they're just starting at a base level of what they're trying to get and then build on top of that. And I think that's what helps me personally. True. It is impossible to look at one of Simon Tom's node setups, not because it's necessarily difficult, but because it's or it's all already made and you can't really view it as you go from left to right. There's no really good way to do that. They should add like a debugger for the nodes, like a little viewer that you can see where each thing is without plugging it into the surface. Because this is what would help. Like everybody understands what layers are in Photoshop and After Effects. You put one yeah. thing over another, therefore it's in the foreground. But for some reason, people don't understand nodes, which in some sense is even like simpler. It's just operation after operation continue. Yeah, that's it. It really is. Like I learned, I learned, believe it or not, I learned node-based compositing before I learned layer-based and After Effects. Like I knew, I knew Shake before I knew uh, After Effects, and it was like. Going to the layer base was almost like cutting myself off because nodes are so powerful. But once you once you understand what they're doing, it's like it's a recipe. It's like cooking. It's like you or like making a sandwich. Like you 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 figure out what you need and then you put it all together and you build it up from from there. So yes. Yeah, the, there's also an element of uh, abstraction that I think would be useful for people to know because mm -hmm. when you're making things like nodes or when you're doing something in the in the modifier stack it's it, well the modifier stack is an is an example of something of something called a component stack and it's where basically all the data at the beginning has a direct butterfly effect of everything that happens at the end right so with your example of the recipe for example um a node equivalent for this would be that yeah you've got your recipe of all your ingredients but if you change something at the beginning it immediately changes something at the end so you have complete control over time like an extra dimension mm -hmm. so you can come up with some really interesting emergent effects where if you build the circuitry right then you can change some very simple parameters and have some very complex changes happen so oh, yeah and that's just done by layers of ab abstraction basically the more layers of control that you have so that's something that's interesting for people to know and also something that makes it daunting is that there's no real limit to the complexity you can have in these node systems other than the performance of your computer, essentially. Yep. Yeah, I think, I mean, one of the, the great things now is that, you know, recently, or I don't know how recently it's been, but more and more people are putting their project files up. And so I think a great way to learn is to download those and really go into that compositor or, or the, the shader editor and um, you know, shift control click and view it, view the network at a certain point, and then click around and mute those different nodes, really to see what they're contributing to the overall effect. I think that's a, for me, that's been a, a way that I think. You know, that's a good point. I, I would buy CG years ago, CG Master's courses, not with the intention of completing, like the modeling was okay to me. I would just want to see their node system, and I would literally pay money for their course just to get the project files. Uh, I think it was CG Master. I'm not 100 percent sure. It's but probably would... CG Matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, I just I would just break down the node groups and just see what's happening. I do that with all sorts of different project files if I find one available, and it's just it's just fun to mess around with and kind of understand how people piece things together. Mm -hmm. Oh, update for people who care. Uh, node groups were great, but you can't actually like uh, view stuff within the node group. Like you open it up, but you can't link it up to the viewer. That's a thing you can do now. So now you, uh, if you download people's project files, it's even easier to understand what's going on because you can view from within a node group. That was something yeah. that's added to 2.9. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. But yeah, what I was going to say is also nodes are hard to learn and you have mm -hmm. to put hard work in. You're, you're using a, a, you know, a fully rigged 3D program. It's going to take some time to learn stuff. Yep. You know, which is why I've like structured my videos to make things as simple as possible and still they're like hard to do. So you have to come in with that mindset. Like you're gonna have to work hard. Like I did a five hour binge one night to like learn some node stuff and it worked. So you're gonna have to put in some work. It's not gonna take like 10 minutes, but do it in increments. Like I would say, learn the basic textures, like the noise texture. And like um, a couple of you said, right when we started the question, it was play around. Literally, even as, as an artist, sometimes you have the problem, like I don't know where to start. Just start with a noise texture. All right, plug a musgrave into that. See what that does. Um, play with those um, things like that. Add a, add a color ramp, or if you know about the math nodes, use you know the math node and play with those. Slowly work up to things. But if you don't know where to start, just start popping a texture, popping the brick texture, see how it reacts when you do this. Things like that. Use the, the mix RGB and play with the factor. All that kind of stuff. 
as you slowly play around with it and understand what they do, you know, the synapses in your brain will connect and you'll figure out what's going on and it'll work. But it's going to take some time. But I guarantee you, you're going to have a lot of fun when you when you start to figure out those things. Because that's what I enjoy about 3D is getting those things you never thought were possible. And now it's a part of your art and it's so fun. And nodes are really a fun way to do that. Curtis, pop question, since mm-hmm. you're our technical guy. Why can you not loop inside of nodes? Why do I have to copy the same chain over and over and over again? Why can't I say five iterations and it just does it five times? Mm. Is there like a technical please, reason? Yeah, you can do that in animation nodes. Um, well, yeah, I'll, yes and no. This comes onto a, a question of how you measure time and instances because time isn't like a real thing in programs. It's just a, a like a loop of ticks essentially where, some, where a single value changes for every tick. So <clears throat> they don't really simulate time in the current node systems, although you can if you animate the values. So as, as for running the same thing over, you can do that in animation nodes, but just not in, in the default node system. I guess that's also just a matter of design. I think they probably could do it if they wanted very easily, but it's just not there because that sort of branches into writing programs, essentially, as soon as you start putting loops in. Uh, which I think is where that's what I want. That's where animation. That's what I want too. Programs. That's as a motion graphics guy. I I deal in loops like ninety percent. So, <clears throat> so I'm constantly like that playing with the W. Yeah. Or rotating. Yeah. And that's all I have. Basically, the the limitation you have uh, at the moment is literally just uh, just making things uh, single values be animated. But what you need is animation nodes because that's exactly what yeah. it's designed to do. Or everything nodes when we eventually get that. So Curtis, I'll ask you the question since he's not here. All right. So he mentioned how he was saying, how why can't you um, loop things without having to like repeat processes? What did he mean by that? Well, you might need to be more specific with that question. Because okay, because it sounded like he knew how to loop them, but it sounded like he had to like duplicate a bunch of things. Do you know what he meant by that? No. Well, I assume that he's just wanting things to change. But he wants to. What he's essentially trying to do is write programs for nodes. That's what it is. So he wants to keep okay. a lot of the nodes doing the same things, but have something slightly different happen every time. And, re- and really, one way that you need to do that right now is just duplicating the nodes over and over and over again and making slight changes between them. Because at the moment, you're limited to only changing single values, but there are lots of nodes with you know rather complex values like color uh, color ramps and stuff like that, which are a bit more difficult to, to manage. But um, you know the, the things that he's asking can be solved with a bit of Python scripting, because not only can you modify every single one of the values of every single one of the nodes, you can write your own nodes, and also you can do things that are detached from the timeline. Because I was looking into this because wondering about doing some smart systems where Blender would try and interpret what you were doing and then change and help help you on the fly. But that Blender at the moment has no concept of real time because they removed the Blender game engine. So there's no like 60 frame a second tick, for example. But what you can very short sighted foundation. Oh, should have thought about yeah, that. Yeah, they should have thought about that. They really should, because I spent a while trying to read up about this. But there is a workaround. You, what you can do is you can write a function and then you can attach it to something called a blender timer. And then you can make the return value um like a like set to 60 frames a second or whatever. So the same function will run over and over and over again. And then you can use that as an entryway to start doing real time processes in Blender detached from the timeline. So, so this like is tutorial. different than handlers? Yeah, it's different from handlers because it's not like an event system. You literally, you just register that function with with a, a pre-made timer system in Blender. I don't know why they've got it, but it's useful. And then it will just run it over and over and over again. You know, so, the people who like open this video are like, oh, how do I learn nodes? <laughs> At this point, they have like no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a general yeah, so, general topic. <laughs> so, well, so I mean, CG, sorry. when you asked that question, were you were you um were you talking about iteration like kind of like the like a solver system? I was just talking yeah. about I've made a set of operations, like a chain of nodes, and I just want to repeat that chain a couple times instead of uh, putting those exact nodes over and over and over again. Got it. Okay. Pause. Right. Does Houdini pause. do Edit. this? Have a... Oh, yes. Edit pause. I don't know if your mic is working. I think it's your computer oh. mic. Sure. One sec. Because it's very... Yeah, it sounds worse. Why? Yeah. Uh, it sounds uh, awful. Video. Yeah, you sound like the worst... <laughs> No, that's just me. <laughs> Dude, I want to furlough. Tess. There, yeah, there does you this go. sound better? Much better. Yeah. Yep, there you go. You're welcome. 
What what is wrong with Discord? You open it again and it changes what your default device is. Yeah, very short-sighted Discord Foundation. There's a lot of short-sightedness <laughs> happening today. 